soil, the bosom of Mother Earth, born of everything and nothing, from the human spirit, comes the extraordinary tale whose hero is known as Mandarin. Mandarin the seed of wonder. Such is the name of the one who brought the corn. Corn, hitherto unknown to the Chippewa Indians of Lake Huron. It all began the day after a terrible storm, when on the shores of the lake, a Chippewa family came upon a canoe and what remained of the belongings of a young couple who had set out the previous evening to fish on the great lake. to look after Zoman, their newborn child, orphaned by the fates. And so, this is the story of the tragedy which one day befell these peaceful villagers. But the sense of family was deeply ingrained to these people, and when some died, others assumed responsibility for life. <laughs> Zoman has only you to care for him. You are not only his grandmother now, you must be his mother as well. An intense sorrow began to flow through the old woman's veins. But, with the days, she did everything necessary out of love to pass on to her grandchild health, peace, and energy of life. For what the old pass on to the young is not unlike the roots of plants, which, each spring, lend vitality and growth, vigor and color. So it was that Zoman came through the first stage of his childhood. The Chippewa hunters and fishermen taught him how to hunt and fish. Zoman learned the art of navigating a canoe in the channels along the shores of lakes and rivers. He was taught to handle the paddle and to guide the canoe down rapids and where to portage. Zomen 
thus learned to become a good hunter and fisherman. He was taught the importance of effort, endurance, and perseverance. He learned to swim with his bow and arrow. Always look after your equipment, Zoman. Never lose your weapon, for it will help feed you in times of hunger. But for that, you must first learn how to stalk animals, to approach a deer from downwind so as not to alarm him. <coughs> Zoman learned to hunt and to fish only when necessary, when he and his grandmother had to eat. <coughs> His grandmother constantly reminded him to make an offering. One cannot kill and take life without each time thanking Kichi Manitou for his gift to us. Zomin, everything which nature gives us is sacred. Remember this always and be grateful. Even if you pick a plant, thank it for its sacrifice and place on the ground at the base of the roots this tobacco in offering. And do not forget it in your prayers. No matter how tired he was, Zomin always wanted to know more. And then, one night, Zoman dreamed, and in his dream felt himself being born into the sky into a world where time has no meaning. Always remember, Zoman, to honor your ancestors and seek peace. Learn to accept failure. Listen to the advice of your elders. You will be a great warrior. You will push back the enemies of your people. Your courage will be for us a source of pride, dignity, and security. Never stop watching over your people, so that at night they can find peace in their deepest sleep. In their deepest sleep. Time passed, and Zoman grew into a man. It was he who now looked after his grandmother. A grandmother who was coming to the end of the trail. The Chippewa Indians did not really fear death, for they saw it as merely a stage on the way to the world of the spirits. Soon I will be gone. 
After I go, a stranger will visit you. Why? Where will he come from? Do whatever he asks of you, my son. You are the most respected warrior in the village. But bear in mind that there is always someone greater than yourself. Learn to face what lies ahead. Face what lies ahead. Zoman's grandmother died. And just as she had predicted, a few days after the burial, a stranger arrived in the village. His unusual size caught everyone's attention. I have come to fight a duel against the best of your warriors. The elders of the village had expected the visit, for it had always been said that, sooner or later, the strongest must prepare to face one who is stronger than himself. To meet the stranger's challenge, the elders chose Zoman. Zoman, the stranger has insulted us. He is a braggart. Make him eat his words. Custom dictated that any stranger be offered the hospitality due any human being regardless of how hostile he might be. Zoman, who had learned to observe his enemies in order to size up their strength, never took his eyes off Mandamin. According to custom, he offered the peace pipe to the stranger. To Zoman, the fact that Mandamin agreed to smoke the sacred pipe was strange, a paradox. The stranger was looking for a battle, yet he accepted the pipe. For smoking the pipe is a prayer, an act of peace between people, and between the living and the great spirit. Zoman. I have come to find a good man, but I have yet to find him. I have been told that you might be this man, or must I go away from here without finding one who will stand up for his people? Who are you? A boaster? I am Mandaman. I give life. If you win, you will live. If you lose, you will die. A stranger will come. Do what he says. Learn to face what lies ahead. 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 I am a man. I will fight. The two warriors agreed to fight only by night 
under the fresh glow of the moon, with their day spent resting and eating. Zoman got to pick the battleground, a clearing away from the village and shielded from view in order not to frighten the people. If I get hurt, I will not utter a sound. Such was the meaning of the black hand painted on his face. Mandaman, on the other hand, enjoyed a different advantage. His considerable size and his huge arms in their leather sleeves, which could be like giant whips. Zoman, in trying to avoid them, had only one goal, to get a hold of his opponent and stop him from lashing out. Zoman's grip was as firm as that of a bear. The day after this incredible bout, Mandaman's face had changed. Zoman, though, was so exhausted by his endless fight that he did not notice the transformation immediately. Mandaman was astonished by Zoman's determination. Was Zoman truly the man he had been seeking? Sure, Mandaman doubled his power, but the stronger Mandaman became, the greater Zoman's determination became, and he was more adept in avoiding the blows. At the end of the last night of this exhausting battle, no one could yet tell which of these two men would emerge the victor. Mandaman's face changed a little more. His skin appeared to be covered with buds, like those seen on plants. Zoman was fascinated, and it began to dawn on him that something unusual would be revealed to him at the end of this duel. to happen, he must defeat Mandaman. Yet the more determined he was to defeat him, the stronger Mandaman became. Then Zoman made one final desperate effort. The face of Mandaman, the seed of wonder, froze slowly registering an eternal message into Zoman's gaze. You win. I yield. I will die. Bury me next to your grandmother. Do not grieve. You are a good man. I am happy for you. sorrow was intense, for he felt he had killed a friend, even though he was a stranger. But deep down, he had done what his grandmother had told him to do. Nevertheless, he wondered, why, why, why? For four nights and four days, Zoman kept a fire lit on Mandaman's grave. Born of 
the universe, in the soil, in the bosom of Mother Earth, born of everything and nothing, from the human spirit comes the extraordinary tale whose hero is known as Mandamin. Mandamin, the seed of wonder. On the fifth day, there appeared on Mandamin's grave an unusual plant which grew at a surprising rate. Zoman narrated his strange battle to the Chippewa medicine man, who told him to continue praying so that the beneficial human values could be joined to the nutritional values of the plants. The plant had reached a certain height. Zoman took a closer look. Feeling that the strange plant was about to flower, he decided to call the medicine man. had ever seen anything like it before. The medicine man touched the plant and unfolded the casing. This fruit is protected with leaves. It is a sign for men to equally protect it and treat it with great care. This plant is sweet, so unlike others. What a marvelous food for our people. Born of everything and nothing, from the human spirit. And so it was that from Mandamin came the corn. Mandamin had chosen to give his life and then to be reborn as corn for the good of people and as a reward for obedience.
Thank you.